Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Come on, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all of my fears. We bless the Lord tonight. We thank God for each and every one of you who have joined us here in this worship center. And certainly for those of you who have joined us virtually, we thank God for you. We thank God for you. Is there a praise in the house? Is there a, one more thank you, Jesus? Is there one more glory to God? Is there one more hallelujah? We thank God for each and every one of you as you begin to magnify and bless the name of the Lord there in your homes. There is no God like our God. He is is the fairest of 10,000. He is the cheapest amongst our lovers. He's our strong tower. He's our hiding place. He's our kinsman redeemer. And we certainly bless his name on tonight. We do bring you greetings from New Covenant Perfecting Ministries under the leadership of Bishop Julia Wade. Come on, you know what we do. We bless God for our bishop. Amen. We bless God for this apostle, this woman of God. We bless God. We thank God for her. We thank God for her tenacity. We thank God for her strength her perseverance come on you let's bless God again but none other than our own Bishop Julia Wade we thank God for her and our lead pastor Pastor Paris Taylor come on let's bless God for our pastor a shepherd's heart the Bible says that I would give you pastors after my own choosing who will feed you with knowledge and understanding and we have one who does just that so we thank God for you tonight Pastor Taylor, and for this governing elder. Come on, let's bless God for Elder Wade, the father of the house. All those who make up this great body of believers. I am Pastor Clarissa Butler. Thank you so much for joining with us on tonight. NCPM and PCPC, we thank God for each and every one of you. Won't you prepare your hearts now? to receive Elder Wade as he comes with prayer. And after that, we will receive our perfecting praisers. And following them will be the voice of our lead pastor, Pastor Paris Taylor. Come on, let's bless God for Elder Wade as he comes. God bless you. Well, we thank God for you on tonight, New Covenant family and our Facebook, YouTube family. As is our custom, let's go before the Lord with great expectations on tonight. Are you hungry for the word? I know you are. Are you looking for God to do something new and special for you on tonight? Yes, I know that's your answer. I see you out there saying that. Then let's go before him with great expectation that he would do something for us that he's never done before. He's that kind of God. He's infinite in resources. He's infinite in blessings. Blessings upon blessings upon blessings. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. The psalmist declared, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord. We sought the Lord. And he heard us and delivered us from all of our fears. Even on tonight, we bring to you eternal God our Father these your people the sheep of your pastor the body of Christ we are the, the holy community that make up your body and we're thanking you once again that we can join them wherever they are in their place of abode at work or wherever they may be by live streaming you've made it all possible for us on tonight and I'm praying God that your Holy Spirit would run swiftly in the earth, even as the man of God would stand behind this sacred desk to break the bread of life, to feed us line upon line and precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, that we would increase not only in knowledge, but in wisdom, wisdom that only comes down from the Father of lights in whom there's no variableness, no shadow of turning. We're believing that signs and wonders would follow the teach word on tonight for these your people. We believe that miracles will take place. We believe that healing will take place. That the bound will say that I am free. That the sick will say that I am healed of the Lord. Thank you because that's the promise you made for us 
who are the blood washed, the blood bought church of the Lord Jesus Christ. You said signs and wonders will follow those that believe on your name. And on tonight, God, we're believing and not only believing, but with great expectations. We know that you're going to do something special for us collectively and individually. Thank you, Lord. Once again, we offer praise and thanksgiving, adoration unto your name. And we thank you even so for the praises that will come, the perfecting praises in their very own way to minister to the heirs of salvation in song. So prepare your hearts tonight, dear ones, beloved, as they come to minister to you, as they go before the seed bearer, they will plow out the ground that the seed may fall upon good ground and bring forth peaceful, peaceable fruits of righteousness in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, prepare me to, to be a sanctuary. sanctuary, pure and holy, dry and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a Sanctuary, Lord, for you. Lord, prepare. Lord, prepare me to be, to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, pure and holy. Tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, for you. And 
with just, thanksgiving. Just this last time. I'll be. I'll be a living sanctuary. Sanctuary. Lord, for you. Yes, I promise. Just one last time. And we're. And with Somebody tell him thank you. Now make this declaration. I'll be. Say it, I'll be a living. living what? Habitation, holy, holy habitation. For nobody else. Oh. Lord, Lord, for you. I'm not going to push the yes. Lord, for you. Lord, for you. Yes, so nothing else out there mistakes. Your declaration is aimed at them, Lord, Lord. for you. Come on, why don't you worship the Lord tonight, even as these angelic voices Lord prepare to come down. And, and I know they're, they're hanging on to that worship. Can you just hang on to the worship Lord for just one moment? Not that they're going to continue singing, but can you just saturate his throne with our worship? Lord, for you, it's been you all the day long. It's been you all this year through. And my, we are practically in May. It has been you, Lord, in the midst of this year and this pandemic. So we saturate your throne. We saturate the atmosphere. We, we send electricity, which is our worship, into the third heaven. Lord, for you. How we magnify you, how we honor you, how we give your name glory. Here's where you just release your own personal worship unto the Lord. Saturate the atmosphere in your home, in your car, in your bedroom, in your den. Maybe you're in the kitchen and you have it on speaker. But wherever you are, here is a moment where you can saturate and sanctify the atmosphere where you are. And watch the Lord inhabit your praise Hallelujah. and and call you Glory higher God. into that place of sacred awareness of his Elohistic and his Jehovahistic excellence and magnificence. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name. Well, we magnify him. Come on, can you just bless the God as these uh, great women of God come down from this worship post and, and, and have done their due benevolence even on behalf of all of us tonight. Well, we greet you in that name which is above every name. I'm Pastor Paris T. Taylor, protocol having already been set. I do want to thank our apostle, our founder, and our bishop personally for holding the reins as she is so capable of doing uh, in my absence. And I thank God that what has transpired has simply cultivated and saturated our spirits and whetted our appetites for, for that spiritual dynamic that makes us believers in the pandemic. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, honoring and saluting our bishop, even the pastor protocol, even this governing elder who loves to pray in the presence of the Lord, even on the eve of our walking and warring in the word, to our leadership, every elder, every elder designate, and we thank God for what's coming down the pike, even for our holy gathering, our hybrid holy gathering next month in our holy convocation. I almost got caught up when I saw that wonderful flyer on the screen, and it almost took everything that the Holy Spirit had given me when I saw it. I was like, whoa. Ain't the Lord all right? This is a good place to start a watch party. Maybe you'll start your watch party tonight by simply saying, ain't the Lord all right? Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he excellent? Isn't he majestic? I, I just need maybe 10 of you to type, oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. I'm still basking to the mothers and the deacons, to the ALAs, to the ministers, to the minister elects, to all those that are preparing to be set in a new place. Somebody ought to type that. I'm preparing to be set in a new place in God. 
Hallelujah. I'm still basking in the aura, the atmosphere, the spiritual ambiance, the afterglow. Um, all the way to Brooklyn, New York, Pastor Byrne in the Mashanda of our resurrection Advent season on our way to what I believe um, it's been such a long year, another Pentecost in the pandemic. Don't count it slack. God has taken us from one place of glory to another, from one level, one realm, and one dimension to another level. Somebody ought to say another level, another realm, and another dimension. I, I wish you really knew tonight what it takes to get from one level to another level, from one realm to another realm, and then from one dimension to another dimension. And my prayer still is that you enhance the quality time you spend with your families and others of those that you love so dear. If my grandmother were here, the dearly beloved and triumphantly transitioned uh, Mother Julia Baker, she would say, um, let us not take this for granted that we always will have one another. But while we have each other in the body, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. I'm moving right into our walking and warring in the word tonight. How many of you feel, still feel like walking and warring in the word? We are defenseless. I assure you tonight we're defenseless if we're not walking in God's word and we're not warring with his word because we are defenseless, but we are uh, unbeatable when we fight with his word, when we stand on his word, when we wage war in the spirit, in his word, quietly he speaks to me. Gently, Jesus leads me. Lovingly, the shepherd carries me, hidden safely in his bosom. Two of you, just type it. The good shepherd knows. <laughs> you don't know how heavy that weighs in the spirit, even in a pandemic. The good Shepherd knows what? Just what I need. Yes, he does. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. You remember John 10 and 11, and I'm not going to walk a war from there tonight, but I wanted to release it. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. That'll keep you. I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep lord move in the midst of us tonight by your spirit and your dunamis even your exorcia in jesus name let the church say amen so tonight saints i just want to get uh, where the holy ghost wants us to be tonight collectively not only collectively, but individually, personally, spiritually, ministerially, in accordance with our election and our calling. There's a place where the Holy Spirit wants us. Do you realize that in every dynamic, in every place, at every juncture, at every crossroad, at every venue, God already, already knew the habitation and the places that we would live, if happily we would feel after him, guess what? We can find him. He is, because he is not far from, somebody say, every one of us. For in him we live, move, and have our being. So tonight, if you would, just for a focal point, where making it make sense and making it count me. Hmm. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? We're making it. Making what? Life in the body of Christ. Maybe that'll hone in a little bit more. We're making life in the body of Christ. We're making it make sense. You ever had days that it just didn't really seem to make sense? We're making it make sense and, and making it count. Watch this. They meet. There is an apex. There is a, 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 there is a, 
a zenith. There is a pinnacle where somewhere in your Christian experience, somewhere in your faith, somewhere in our walk, it begins to make sense. We have a spiritual epiphany. I mean, the spiritual light comes on and we say, you know what? Why am I doubting God again? Why am I needing to be reassured that God can't lie? that he won't change, and that is always now with God. He's able to remedy, to rescue, to relieve, to redeem, to restore, to recover, to reconcile, to reinstate, to remit, and to renew. Did anybody remember that? But there are days, aren't there, that it just doesn't seem to make sense or count for very much. I don't want to speak for you. This life that we live by the power of God, can you turn to 2 Peter 1, 1 through 11, and I know it's going to read familiar, but, but I believe the Holy Spirit is going to do something very spiritually diplomatic. There's something about spiritual diplomacy that the Holy Spirit is the only one who can reason with us from a spiritually diplomatic place because that's who he is. He is the comforter and he is the keeper and he is the one to guide us into all truth. Here it is. And bring all things back when we forget them to our remembrance. So, 2 Peter 1, 1 through 11. You might be thinking um, where these crossroads connect, making it count and making it make sense, that might be, for someone, revelation knowledge. For somebody else, that might be an unction from the Holy One. The place where spiritual sobriety and spiritual intelligence and spiritual duty meet or align themselves in oneness. For those that might need a short-range spiritual missile tonight as we prepare to read this text, making it happen in God. Well, bless God, our apostle has just walked in. I, I felt some extra help just then. I was celebrating all that wonderful digging it out, uh, uh, governing Elder Wade, hoeing out not her, her rope. She was hoeing out my rope for a few weeks, and, and I appreciate it. It brought me some spiritual sobriety, some new level of spiritual intelligence, and a new place of uh, committedness to my spiritual duty. Anytime some, hallelujah, Jesus, anytime somebody step in and, and hoe out your row or, or handle your business in God's kingdom when you know that was your assignment, maybe you ought to take a moment and show them a level of appreciation. Wait a minute, not just me, because she was doing it for me, but she was doing it for me in you. Ooh, I'm going to get stuck. <laughs> I'm going to back up for a minute. Ooh, I'm so glad I'm here in Jesus' name. The place where spiritual sobriety and spiritual intelligence and spiritual duty meet or align themselves together. That sounds like a threefold chord to me. Mm, for those that might need a short-range spiritual missile, making it happen in God in this pandemic freight. Maybe you should look up fray. Fray is a fight. It's a battle. It's a skirmish. It's something that jumped off that you didn't even know was about to happen, and it was launched against you. How many of you feel like in the pandemic, and we've been here for a minute, you've been in a couple of spiritual frays? You ain't talking to me. It's all right. Who's interested? Sometimes the great misfortune is that I'm about to read is that for some, God only knows truly who and how many. These three never fully align themselves. Spiritual sobriety, I'm going to say it again. Spiritual intelligence and spiritual duty. The enemy hopes that we are not spiritually sober. He hopes that we're not moving in accordance with spiritual intellect. And then he certainly hopes that we fall far short of accomplishing or achieving our somebody, say it real good, spiritual duty. I heard you, Pastor C. Ruth, if I walk in the pathway of duty, if I work till the close of the day, I know there's a joy that awaits me. When I'm gone, there's no rewards for going the first few miles, but you got to go what? You sound like you want to walk in war in the word. Glory be to God. Uh, what we all know as saints, though, is we got to give up God all the credit for landing each one of us safe on Canaan's side. 
care how spiritually astute you are, how spiritually sober you are, how, how spiritually in tune to your spiritual kingdom assignment you are. We don't get to Canaan's side safe, save the Lord land us. You better stop. <laughs> Woo. Oh, my goodness. That's where the Holy Spirit wants to take us tonight. That, my brothers and my sisters, changes the matter. Somebody might say, changes the game considerably. Without any further ado, let's listen to Peter. I'm going to have fun in here tonight just seeing what the Spirit does in our spiritual makeup to make sure that we're on task and on point at the right time, in the right place, doing the right thing for the right reason. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on, let that get in you. Grace, because you're going to need it, and peace, because we can't live without it. Be, watch this, what? Abundantly multiplied unto you through, this is how we get it, the knowledge of God and, our, and of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We don't get grace and peace multiplied abundantly unless we get it through what? The knowledge of God, come on, stay with me, and of Jesus our Lord. Because if you don't get it like that, you're pretending to have something that you don't really have. Say, I really need it. I got to have it. I can't do without it. God's grace and his peace. The devil don't like it. According as his divine power hath given unto us, what? All things that, what? Pertain unto what? Life. There it is, that it, life, it is that life, life is that it. And godliness, here it is again, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory, interesting word, and virtue. Glory usually means doing what we don't feel like doing that God called us to do because it's for him in us for his eternal purpose. And it feels like anything but glory. He's a setup artist. Glory and virtue, I'm running, whereby are given unto us. Still one, one, one statement here. Great and precious promises. Watch. That by these, by these what? Great and precious promises that are what? Given unto us. Why? Ye might be partakers, here it is, of the divine nature. We don't become partakers of the divine nature, except they are given to us, what? These great and precious promises that we might be partakers. That's the only reason they're given to us, having escaped the corruption. We get them after escaping the corruption that is in the world through lust. And here it is. And besides this, here's what we do. Giving all diligence. We can't half-heartedly do it. Add to your faith virtue. Virtue is what Jesus said left him when Veronica stole a healing. Okay, I thought you'd remember that. So when virtue leaves, the best part of you just left, but, but God put it there, never for you. I'm tapping to Bishop. <laughs> and to virtue, knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. Now, I probably look all those words up in my not so spare time. I probably put some urgency on that. Verse 8 For if these things be in you, that list we just shared together, watch this, not just be in you and lie dormant and, a, and abound. Saints, it's got to be growing in you. Maybe a lot of times what God has put in us is just sitting in, in there like some stuff that sits in. You ever had something that you just had to have and you put it in the refrigerator and you never went back to it? It's still just sitting in there. And after a while, if it has a shelf life, and usually it's in the refrigerator because it has a shelf life and it can perish. In other words, become of, of no usefulness anymore. So it can't just be sitting in you. Somebody say, and abound. They make you, watch, they make you that ye shall neither, here's their importance, be barren nor unfruitful, unuseful. In, here it comes again, the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Seems like everything is predicated on the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Seemingly, we want to predicate most things on our emotions, on our feelings, on external circumstances, but the word says clearly here. It's only predicated every time I've seen something promised to us that is fruitful, that is abounding, that is beneficial, that is spiritually equitable. It's always based on the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things, if you don't have them, is blind and cannot see afar. Wait a minute. You're blind and can't see nothing. <laughs> I told you, every once in a while, I'm having a little fun now. Now, it's one thing to be blind in one eye, but it's something altogether different to be blind in one eye and can't see out the other eye. Somebody playing with you. That's just straight up blind. You can't, you can't see up close, and you can't see far back. Now, I don't think bifocals are helping that situation. You're short-sighted, you're nearsighted, and you're far-sighted. But it's right there in the Word, isn't it? Okay. Man, can't see afar off. Here's, here's what happens when that begins to set in, that kind of blindness. And hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. I got a lot of work to do. I'm, I'm going to rush a minute. Wherefore the rather. However, hopefully because now this is clearer, some spiritual sobriety has set in. Some spiritual intelligence has come about, and now it makes us to understand this. Watch this. Here it is. Some spiritual duty got to start to manifest. Isn't it interesting how the word correlates, corresponds, coasles, comes together? Give diligence. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election your what? Calling and election what? Sure. For if ye do these things... You shall never fall. But if you don't make your calling and election sure, you're going to fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered, ministered, served. You'll be attended unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That is the goal, isn't it? I'm talking virtually now. Out there, maybe you'll share it with somebody. We need to become more spiritually sober more spiritually intelligent, and more spiritually duty-minded. Somebody type, I'm going all the way with the Lord. I like that. Somebody doubled down. Who's really willing to say, I'm going all the way with the Lord? Who's willing? Who's willing? I'm, I'm listening. Who's willing? Type it. I want you to type it. I want you to, you got nothing to lose. Type it. I'm going, every time you release that into your atmosphere, guess what? Your enemies recognize, oh my goodness, she ain't leaving the Lord. He isn't leaving the Lord. You ought to type that. I'm not leaving the Lord. The devil leaves when you say that. You don't remember. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he leaves. When you say things like, I'm not leaving the Lord, the devil said, well, I got to get out of here. Her and the Lord, him and the Lord, I can't take not, no, not another minute of them two together. Type it. I'm going all the way. And then stay the course. Now type no matter what. Who will declare that tonight? I'm not leaving the Lord. I'm going to stay my course because my course says all the way from earth to glory. Who will declare that? Maybe somebody will say, I'm sold out. An unction, an anointing of the Holy Spirit, a smearing for the glory of God. I'm truly sold out. Somebody type it. You're going to begin to feel greater victory. Type it. What you got to lose? Getting with God leaves you nothing to lose. I'm sold out, I'm sold out, I'm sold out, I'm sold out, I'm sold out. No room, no vacancy. I'm all filled up. His spirit lives in me. That's the reason. The song doesn't say this, but I'm going to say it. Why? That's the reason why I'm sold out. I don't know why. I don't need to know, but I don't know why you're sold out. 
but I'm sold out because I'm all filled up with his spirit. The greater knowledge of the Savior, the greater the, the, greater the knowledge of the Savior, the greater the willingness to surrender all, the greater the anointing, the greater the smearing. There's no need for God smearing you with his extra ordinary abilities when you're not working. The greater the anointing, the greater the smearing, the greater the smearing, the greater the assignment. Watch this. For the glory of God. It's the only reason. God ain't anointing anyone. He isn't anointing anyone just to be great. He's already great. You remember Paul states it rather candidly in Romans 12, 1, 2. I'm going to read it from the English Standard Version just to give it a new... It's the same word, but a, a different twist so you can get a deeper perspective. A living sacrifice, a living sacrifice. I appeal to you, therefore, brother, A, by the mercies of God. The, the appeal has to be by God's mercy because outside of God, we couldn't do it. B, to present your body, C, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world. Hold on to that thought. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. You see, saints, this unction doesn't fully manifest, mature, or magnify God without full perpetual committedness. There is no full manifestation of the unction or the anointing or that special in doing with power if there's no readiness to do our spiritual duty. The Bible, when imbibed, okay, the Bible, when absorbed or soaked up as water, light, or heat, always fully agrees, connects, corresponds, and points us to the Savior and to God's eternal purpose. God has promised us exceeding great and precious promises um, in accordance with the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we might carry out his eternal purpose and that it might magnify the Savior. The Bible, when not only imbibed, but in, imbued. Okay, here it is. To take or receive into the mind. To take or receive into the mind as knowledge, ideas, ideals, or the law of governance. Can I say that again? Imbibe, to take or receive into the mind, owning it, walking in it, making it who I am and making me what it is. As knowledge, ideas, and ideals, or the law of governance. That's temperance. You see, saints, we cannot be ungovernable and also maintain an holy unction. Would that get me back up here again, Apostle Wade? How do I maintain my holy unction? Maybe somebody's interested. How do I maintain my holy unction? It's the best thing you got. And so when you flip in and out of your holy unction, every time you flip out, you have no earthly good. Because you don't need a holy unction in heaven. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. You don't need no holy unction up there. I didn't say we couldn't be talented or perpetrate a stale gift as an authentic anointing of a yielded vessel. Oh, we can do that. Some of us are talented and gifted enough. I know some folk who can just tear up a church singing and never touch the heart of God. Tear up a church preaching and never get through the ceiling. Tear up a church dancing. How you tear a church up dancing? You must have ever been to the black church. They can tear it up dancing. And get in the parking lot and I ain't going to say it. Whatever goes on. You remember we're talking about the place where spiritual wholeness, spiritual astuteness, and spiritual effervescence. Anybody remember good old alka -Seltzer? When I was a kid, I didn't have to be sick, but it was something about that plop, plop, fizz, fizz. You drop it in the water and I saw something I had never seen. I'm like, what in the world is that? That's what happens when the Holy Spirit gets inside a real believer. It effervesces. 
it, it, it becomes lively. What is in God has just been deposited in you. Then you were given an unction, a smearing and anointing. And when you go around other people, you effervesce. You manifest for the glory of God. Here I go again. This is what I call the spiritual separator, the spiritual partition, if you will. I'm back at 1 John 2, 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. I know sometimes you don't want to hear that because we like to hang out with who? Even in a pandemic, they done told you you can take your mask off out there in the world with the world. You better act like you got more sense than that. CD can't see. Call India. They said, you better put that mask on. I'm begging for a vaccine. I'm not pushing the vaccine. I'm pushing living and holy living. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, some seeming edge on everybody else so you can look good, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away. It's only going to be temporary, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. If you're not interested in spiritual intellect, this is boring. Little children, here's why it shouldn't be. It is the last time, and as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. When? In the last time. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Spiritual sobriety. How are you going to act when you know it's the last time? They went out from us, decided that they couldn't do it any longer, but they were not of us, for if they had been of us, they wouldn't have thrown in the tower. They would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Now, you do with that what you want to. I'm going to take my chances in the church. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. And we know, you remember, saints, we're talking about the place where making it happen in God is our highest priority. Being sold out is our deepest joy. Who's interested? You ought to tap ten people on the shoulder, tag them as they say virtually, and say, I'm interested in making it happen for God my highest priority. Nothing else is more important. The spiritual place where sobriety, spiritual, the, the spiritual place where spiritual sobriety and spiritual intelligence and spiritual duty meet or align themselves. This is knowing who you are, why you are, and how you are. Whoa. Spiritual sobriety, spiritual astuteness, or spiritual intelligence is not vacillating back and forth every day, uh, Pastor C. Ruth. Well, I'm a giant in God, but not today. I got holy boldness, not tomorrow. Let me ask again. This is knowing who you are, why you are, and how you are in your gifting, your calling, your election, and your anointing. These super wonderful, super charismatic, super, influ in super influential persuasions will deceive us when they are not founded upon Holy Spirit governed character and separation from the world or worldliness. Maybe I should say it again. These super wonderful, super charismatic, super influ influential persuasions will deceive us, God forbid, when they are not what? Founded upon Holy Spirit governed character or founded upon separation from the world or worldliness. You remember that You've been called to the kingdom for such a time as this. This is the time for declaring and establishing spiritual lines of demarcation. I can't hang out with the world. I can't say what the world is saying. I can't do what the world is get, doing. I can't act like the world is acting because the world is looking at me to be able to, to stalemate my unction. I see some agreement out there. I got a few minutes, just a few. Maybe I won't get as far as I thought I would, but we're walking and warring daily. Uh, 1 Peter 2. Notice the corresponding context of the coordinating connection between our spiritual line of demarcation and our spiritual acumen and our spiritual astuteness. Being spiritually aware is all that is. Uh, it's what it is. 
to whom coming, verse 4, 1 Peter 2, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men. The world don't want Jesus, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also, as li lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood for the inhabiting of the Spirit of Christ to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious. He that believeth on him shall not be confounded. It's about to get real, real up in here. Unto you therefore which believe, unto you therefore which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. I got to say this real quick. You know what stone they're talking about? You know what structure they're talking about? You know, Ale and Zion, a stone, a tri stone, uh, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Where's the cornerstone in this building? In one of these four corners or the other, right? Well, this description in scripture doesn't fit that description because not only is it the chief cornerstone, but it's the capstone. Here comes some spiritual intelligence. I'm about to sober you up spiritually because we like to be drunk, drunk in the spirit, but, but come on, let's wake up and be sober-minded sober and vigilant. This What is that? That's a triangle. What structure you know is shaped like that? The pyramid. Now watch this. What is the capstone? It's the stone that's at the top. Now why is it the stone at the top? Because, uh, because it can go on to the rest of the pyramid. Is, pyramid is constructed. The great pyramid, which is, which is believed uh, uh, theologically and, 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 and historically uh, by the richest man in the east, it was built, and that was Job. Remember, Job said, if, if I could find him, God said, where were you when I laid the plumb line? The measurements of the Great Pyramid are, are identical with the measurements of the universe. Now watch this. The capstone has become the cornerstone, but, but it's a rock, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. What you talking about, preacher? Uh, the builder's trying to build a pyramid, and every time they grab this particular capstone, it ain't time for it yet. Sometimes we're ready for Jesus to do what it ain't time for him to do yet. And we keep grabbing the capstone. It ain't time for the capstone. It's time for us to be lively stones. Taking care of our spiritual responsibility, our spiritual duty. Living spiritually sober lives so folk who are weak and feeble among us can realize, watch this, even in a pandemic headed to Pentecost, we can make it. So, if you don't believe or if you're disobedient, you ain't going to ever be ready for that capstone because the capstone goes on the top. And Jesus said, I, I'm going to be the head of your life or I'm not going to be in your life. You're looking at me like I messed up. But ye, here it is, whereunto also they were appointed, even them which stumble at the word. Who stumbles at the word? Those who never obey it. But ye are, but ye are, say, but I am, a chosen generation. Wait, which generation is he talking about? We just read earlier, this the last times. Who is the chosen generation in the last time? That ain't difficult math. Who's living in the last times? Say me. But ye are. You can own that. A chosen generation. Watch this. A royal priesthood. And holy nation. A peculiar people. That ye should show forth the praise of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That is not Israel. That's the church. The Israel wasn't called out of darkness into the marvelous light. They was called out of Egypt. Spiritual intelligence. I got just a couple of minutes, which in time past were not a people. That certainly wasn't Israel either, but are now the people of God. Somebody, church, let church say amen. Which have not, which had not obtained mercy. You know that's us, but now have obtained mercy. 
Dearly beloved, that's the church. I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that's the church, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, that's the church, they made by your good works, that's the church, no wood, no stubble, no hay, but gold, silver, and every precious stone, make it make sense, make, make, making it make sense and making it meet, and making it count meet. They shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. What visitation? The rapture. What is my spiritual responsibility? Who am I in God? Without God or outside of God, I know that I am nothing but in God. What is my God reality? What is my God initiative? What is my God provision? You'll remember. Let me grab from the message before I shut down for the night. Uh, the message, Matthew 6, Steep your life in God reality. Steep it. Steep it. What does it mean to steep your life? Soak it. Put some fire on it. Boil it. Heat it up. Live fervent in the sight of God. Steep your life in God reality. Let's stop grabbing our reality. I know a lot of times we like to make our experiences our reality, don't we? It's pretty difficult to argue with me that my experience is not my reality. But I'm not living this life in accordance to my experiences or my external circumstances. I wish I had time to ask David to help us. Uh, it is good that I was afflicted, that I might know his statutes. But, but the affliction is so that I can understand God's reality even in affliction. Paul, these light afflictions. God initiative. God don't give us the day off because the day tough. He's trying to do a greater work in tougher times. God initiative and then God provisions. Don't worry about missing out. Maybe that's the problem. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Give your entire attention to what God is doing when? Right now. It's always right now with God. There's that corresponding connecting collective truth. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. Don't become consumed with things we don't control. While at the same time, if we lose focus, begin ignoring our spiritual duties and responsibilities. I'm going to say this and I'm out for tonight. I'm just a shepherd with a slingshot and a Holy Ghost bag full of five stones, like David. But I know what's in my bag, Bishop. I heard you last night. I, I'm, I, oh, you want to know what's in my bag? I'm delighted you asked. Yes, I know what's in there. Because what's in my bag, see, when, when, when the Holy Ghost changes the veracity of your wineskin, here's what you find out. You the bag. You remember Apostle Wade? I used to sneak in my daddy records. I didn't know what it was saying. I thought I did. Uh, Papa got a brand new, huh? I didn't know then if uh, L.D. Uh, Slaughter, L.D. Lech Taylor, I didn't know if it was saying Papa got a brand new band. I was at, what's wrong with the old band? And I didn't know if it was bad, but I finally got up on the fact that Papa got a brand new bag. I don't know what was in Papa's bag, but I promise y'all know what's in my bag. Every believer who has a bag and know you're the bag that you have, then you ought to ask God to change the veracity of your wineskin. You ought to ask God to give you some spiritual Teflon toughness. Oh, you want to know what's in my bag? Well, I'm glad you asked. The first thing in my bag is empowerment. That's stone number one. The second thing in my bag is eschatological end time prophetic truth. That's stone number two. Stone number three is godly wisdom. Stone number four is godly knowledge. Stone number five is godly understanding. You know that's what I talk about. You already know me out here like that. You better know what's in your spiritual bag. You remember, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You remember, you're God's champion, you're God's choice, you're God's vessel, and you're God's voice. 
You are not to be halt between two opinions or vacillate back and forth. Today we're for God. Today, tomorrow we're not sure because we seem to be living in abundance. God is for us. And when we're in lack, Paul says, I learned whatsoever state I'm in therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and how to, be a, a, how to abound. I know how to be in poverty and I know how to be in privation. I know how to, how to suffer long. Uh, with little, and I know how to suffer along with a lot. Because a lot, a lot of times, we do more suffering with a lot than we do with a little. Knowing this gets you to the place where spiritual wealth, spiritual health, and spiritual reward coalesces, forms a rock, and becomes our strong defense. It's where we become fully persuaded that no weapon, my brothers and my sisters, shall prosper. No evil shall befall you. No plague shall Come now, you're dwelling, and every tongue that rises up against you in judgment shall be condemned. If you believe that, if you're interested in that, you're on your way to spiritual sobriety, spiritual acumen, spiritual acceptance, and then spiritual conveyance. It's where we become fully persuaded that this rock is Jesus, our provider, our healer, our savior, our deliverer, our high tower, our hiding place, our shield, and our buckler. Here it is. It is where he becomes the glory and the lift of our head. It is where we can tell the devil, devil, you a liar, because he says, I'm his handiwork, I'm his craftsmanship in the earth. So then tonight, let's agree, I am who God says, you ought to say it, that I am. Even when it looks like ain't nothing working. You tell the devil that he said to me, grace and peace be multiplied unto me through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ, my Lord, according as his divine power hath given me all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that he hath called me to glory and virtue, whereby he has given unto me great and exceeding precious promises, and by these I might be partaker of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Praise God from whom all blessings flow tonight, saints. Praise him, all creatures here below. This is certainly the place where God is glorified in our lives, where he has brought us to spiritual astuteness and spiritual liveliness in manifestation, where we are demonstrating the power and the exuberance and the effervescence of who God is in his church, in the earth, by the Spirit, to the glory of God the Father and to that great shepherd or all the sheep, Jesus, the righteous Son of God. Well, I'm finished tonight. The Holy Spirit has uncommonly, generously dealt with us tonight. Come on, friends, would you plant a seed with those of us who are planting tonight? I'm just asking you for a $10 perfecting seed tonight. You know me out there. I'm going to triple down because I need to. I need three times the perfecting. So I'm going to plant a $30 seed tonight. Anybody feeling like you need to do that as well, come on. I invite anyone else who needs to sow that third level seed with me. You're invited and encouraged at the same time because the, the anointing you respect is the anointing you attract. If you want to be a harvester, be a sower. If you want to harvest a lot, sow a lot. So I'm asking all of you tonight who need a great harvest, even in a pandemic, not just so you can lay back and uh, be satisfied, but somebody needs you to get a great harvest because your faith is of such that you will plant a great seed and then they'll be sustained. They're just about at the point to eat and die. And bury everything that's sacred to them. But if you plant that $30 seed tonight. Or that $10 seed. Or somewhere in between. You're going to help sustain not only somebody else. But your seed. And your seed's seed. Your children. And your children's children. Even unto 33,000 years. That's in the ages of ages. And the aeons of aeons. Well. I'm finished tonight. Thank you for your kind generosity and know this, that because you've continued to be generous week after week, uh, gathering after gathering, virtual showing after virtual showing, my God shall supply all your needs, all of them, 
according to your belief in him, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you tonight. I command, declare, and decree God's favor on your lives and on the lives of those that you love so dearly. Now, Lord, we bless you as you've blessed us tonight. Continue to keep us in this pandemic is our prayer in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. Well, I'm finished for now. I'm Pastor Paris T. Taylor, lead pastor at the New Covenant Perfecting Ministry, where none other than the illustrious apostolic bishop, our presiding prelate of our reformation, that wonderful apostle in apostolic grace and dimension who helps us to hold on to our spiritual sobriety, our spiritual equilibrium, our spiritual intelligence, and our spiritual duty. Come on, bless her one more time before we get out of here tonight. She is our apostle. NCPM, Trial Christian Academy, PCPC, Christ Dominion, City Kingdom Church of the Reformation. You already know me out here like this. You know that I love you. Peace. We're out.